Trevor here from Homestead Howe, and I am just pumped and excited for today's video. I have a treat in store for you. This man is a legend, an absolute legend. His name is Sean. He's from Intentional Carnivore, and he's my new best friend. We just had one of the best conversations ever. This guy was 457 pounds about a year ago about a year ago and he's dropped 243 pounds and he doesn't even care about the weight because so much else has changed. I was just saying to him, I was like, if this was a movie, it would be unbelievable and people wouldn't watch it, but it's the truth. This man is a legend. He's an inspiration and he's going to inspire you and he's going to inspire a lot of people to change their lives. So happy. Great honor to have Sean from Intentional Carnivore on the video. I'm super excited. I've been looking forward to this for a while. Sean from Intentional Carnivore is here. Welcome, Sean. Thank you for having me, sir. Your story is just amazing to me. I wrote down a whole bunch of questions, and I don't even think we're going to need to go off of them because I, I, I've watched a couple of your videos now. It seems like mm. you and I have a lot in common, although your journey has been amazing. Could you just tell us your story? Okay, absolutely, yeah. So like a lot of people could say, I... I started my journey April the 17th of 2022 is when I started eating carnivore. Before that, I ate the standard American diet. I was unhealthy, pre-diabetic, um, high blood pressure, just had been recently diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I, I was suffering from, I don't, I don't even know how to describe the 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 deepness and darkness of the depression and anxiety. I mean, it was so bad that for three years prior to April, when I started the couch that I do YouTube and interviews and whatnot from myself, I would lay on this couch to sleep. I, I would get up to eat, maybe go to the bathroom and then go right back to sleep. I couldn't work. I couldn't hardly walk. I tell my viewers a lot of times, I couldn't even take a shower without being out of breath. I was 457 pounds whenever I started this and everything in my life was really suffering. Um, and I, I had lost hope, honestly. So, I mean, just talking, talking about the depression was probably one of the biggest things in my life. Obviously they were all huge issues. Um, but the depression was one of the big things that, uh, that I think impacted everything else. Nevertheless, as I, most of what I would do during that time period leading up to when I started this was lay on the couch and watch TV, look at YouTube, uh, listen, you know, listen to podcasts, different things like that. And one day I stumbled, I was listening to a Joe Rogan podcast and somebody had come on to mention that um, a, a lady, Miss Rhonda, um, but she was talking with Joe about the, the carnivore diet and all the benefits from it. And honestly, I thought they were crazy. So I just started looking it up on, on YouTube and I stumbled across a Dr. Ken Berry video. And, and I even, I thought this guy's even more crazy than them because this guy is a medical <laughs> doctor. He should know better, you know? And the more I listened, like he was a believer in it. And I started reading the testimonies that, you know, people testifying to the, the truth of the matter. And I'm like, listen, I don't know how crazy these people are, but if they're saying that this is going to work, I'm going to give it a try. And one thing led to the other. And April 17, 2022 was the day that my life changed, my friend. You became the captain of your own ship and took control. It, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's really remarkable, honestly. I mean, it, and whenever I tell the story, if I haven't, if I hadn't lived through it, and I tell people all the time, I have the receipts. I have the lab work. I have the, the my neighbors, my wife. You know, there's people that see me every day that can testify to this because it's unbelievable. When, when you start talking about so many things that you experience, just the depression alone, for example, you know, I, I've lost 243 pounds in, since April the 22nd of last year. And it's amazing. Most, yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. And it's insane. And a lot of people are like, there's no way you can helpfully lose that. I'm like, I didn't push a button and say, you know, I'm not dialing it. I didn't have a choice in the matter. You know, I just put the right stuff in. 
But even more so than 243 pounds being lost, you can be skinny or you can be underweight or you can be overweight. But if you don't have hope, if you're living in a place of dark and deep depression, it doesn't matter what state your life in is in because you mm. don't have the will or the hope to function. And that's where I was at. So there's a lot of factors, man, that to me, the weight loss is great. Some of the other non-scale victories from just putting the proper nutrition into your body that we were designed to eat is is critical, you know, and you can't discount the effects of just doing what we're supposed to do anyway, you know. You're you're pulling at my heartstrings here. Um, I I too have had horrible horrible depression, and it's exactly like you said, Sean. You can't describe it, and people don't understand it. And when you get into that deep level of depression, oftentimes people will be like, oh, I get sad too. You know, you just need to go for a walk or do this. But a lot of people I don't think realize sort of the darkest darkness you can get into with depression. I, mm -hmm. I was on every um, antidepressant medicine, SSRI. It sounds very similar to your story. I was almost uh, catatonic, like a zombie. I would just lay there like I couldn't. And I felt so guilty and horrible for my children. And my family, we had uh, we had this detached uh, woodworking shop. It was on our garage, and there's no windows. And I used to just go down there. I would sit there for hours, just in the darkness, doing nothing. Just horrible, horrible depression. And so I, I feel you, brother. I, I tell people, if I I've only I have nothing like what you did. Obviously, I've lost 35 pounds. It's changed my life. But I said in my first video. If you gave me a ticket, a lottery ticket for a billion dollars, I would not take that lottery ticket if it meant that I wouldn't know about carnivore diet. And and it's not the weight. It's just that depression, getting rid of that depression alone and about a million other things, too. I had horrible arthritis and I was living in constant depression, anxiety, fatigue, brain fog. I had arthritis in my elbows and my back. I was constant pain. IBS. I just had this thing. I pulled out all my pills and there's like. 30 or 40 pills. And I'm thinking back, I'm like, geez, I don't think one of those pills ever even helped me. It was like a temporary little Band-Aid. And now on carnivore, I need none of those. IBS is gone. Arthritis is gone. Depression, anxiety. I'm happy. The mood's better. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's so fun talking to you because you're shaking your head and you believe it and you know it because you've walked it. And I've, I'm barely scratching the surface. I'm just at day uh, 66. Is my, I'm on my day 66 now. But all these things have happened within 66 days, the depression being gone and everything. It's amazing. It's, I, I totally feel you where you're coming from on the, the depression stuff. Yeah, it is hard to understand. And, and you know, I, sometimes I feel like I harp on it a lot. That's what initiated me to start a YouTube channel, because this is this is something I was a paramedic. I worked EMS for 12 years. Uh, before that, I worked construction, doing, you know, tile work, ceramic tile, stuff like that. Um, I, I've done a lot of other stuff. YouTube was never on my radar making videos. The reason why I'm, I feel compelled to do this is because that I know and and even work it. Let me back up before I get any further than that, because EMS, you deal with some of them, the, the, a wide range of any kind of emergency. I had been in healthcare, not just EMS, but I also did other things in, in healthcare for a little bit. I knew about depression the whole time. I've had family members that had depression and I thought that I understood that. It's almost indescribable how like for me, for example, like, and I, and I don't want to harp on it, but I do want to get the message across because I think it's vitally important for people to hear. There's definitions of depression, but until you experience it, you can't understand it. And I've been married for 21 years to the same, same beautiful lady. And I have a 15 year old and I have a 12 year old. I, it's not that outside circumstances were so messed up that I was, you know, just feeling sad or whatever. I physically could not make myself get up to do things that even the things that I enjoyed to do. You, and it, it's so hard to describe those things until you've experienced it. I thought I knew because I used to think the same thing. Well, good gracious, if you need to go to the, you know, to the doctor and get, you know, medication or if you need to do this or that, for, let's do that. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, the problem is that those things don't 
don't even come close to helping, you know, from experience with medication and hearing other people's testimony that we're not in the shape beforehand than I was, that I, I wasn't even willing to go to the doctor to get the medication for the depression because I'm like, that that, that stuff, you know, it, it's going to make me feel a certain way, but I just can't do it. And that's why I think it even sent me in further into the hopelessness because I didn't think that there was any answer to it. And then whenever you start eating like that and you start feeling that change, there's a video on my channel. It's, it's not very long. It's All right, guys. Good morning. Carnivore Quest community. I'm out here doing my challenge this morning. Do a little walking up and down the street. As you guys can see, I didn't feel like doing it. Didn't really want to do it. Didn't have the motivation to do it. But motivation follows action every time. This weight ain't gonna lose itself. So I'm out here putting in work this morning. If I can do it, you can too. Keep pushing forward. And I had made the that walking video for a carnivore group that I had joined right after that. It's the first day that I started walking after that three years of being on the couch and in that depression mm. and I came out of it. And I, I still to this day look back to that video because of the where I was. I, I could put myself back in that position to remember what it was like. And there's, you know, I, I haven't forgot by any means, but the inspiration that even I, it puts me in tears almost because I see how sad I had gotten and I see how far I've come. And it inspires me now to get this message out to anybody who will listen. You may think it's crazy. You may not believe it. I certainly didn't. And I was certainly skeptical. However, there's somebody out there right now. They may be watching Homestead How. They may be watching Intentional Carnivore. They may be watching some other channel. And that's where they're watching it isn't important. The, the fact is I'll have to get this message to that one person who is laying there, sitting there, in the car, on, on break time, whatever they're at, that has lost hope and is ready to give up, that there is still hope, do not give up. Give this a try and see what it does for you, and then come back and let's talk. Amen. Uh, that is I, – I keep saying to people too, I wish I could go back 20 years ago and just have this information. You're not telling people, hey, do carnivore, but you're presenting the information for them so they can choose for themselves if they want to do it. And you and I never had that choice until we kind of stumbled upon it later. So I I'm totally with you. I, I feel the same way, too. My plan was I thought it was crazy, too. This carnivore thing, it's insane. And mm -hmm. very similar to you, Sean, uh, my first video I watched was Dante from Frigno Freedom. And, oh, yeah. Uh, that guy's awesome. And I just real quick, it's just a funny story because my wife and I were watching it and I was so cynical. It was one of his first videos and he was just starting carnivore. And I was like, Psh, there's no way. And then I noticed the video was two, two years ago. So I was like, yeah. there's no way he's still doing this two years later. And I was just being a jerk about it. And I'm like, let's go look at one of his new videos. Well, here it is. January 14th, 2022, my two year carnivorsary. I couldn't even recognize the man afterwards. Just completely know, right? ripped. And it wasn't just the weight loss either, like you were saying to your point, but he lost all the weight, but he just looked healthier. His demeanor, he was happier. He's just a completely different person. And I was like, I got to check into this more. And then um, I think I went down a very similar path to you. I have so much respect, gratitude, admiration for Dr. Ken Berry. Mm -hmm. I, I went down the rabbit hole on his videos. Dr. Berry did a video on type 2 diabetes. And this guy, I think it has 2 million views and like a thousand mm -hmm. comments. And if you read through those comments, it'll bring a tear to your eye. Almost every comment is like, Dr. Barry, you saved my life. Dr. Mm -hmm. Barry, carnivore diet. You, you've given me what 10 years of going to doctors haven't given me. It's mm -hmm. like that man deserves so much more uh, recognition. He deserves like a Nobel Prize or something. It's, it's amazing what he's doing. I jumped into it in the first week. I started experiencing some of these things you were experiencing. When I had the deep, deep, dark depression, uh, that was about 10 years ago. And I, I luckily I came upon keto and I started experimenting with keto. And I noticed that it started helping with the depression, but it didn't put it away. And I started going down the, the pill road, which I completely regret. 
uh, for me. I, I mean, if those work for some people, great, but it, it didn't work for me. Right. And mm -hmm. it, it the word you used, Sean, was great. Hopeless, complete mm -hmm. hopelessness at the end of my rope. Like, this is it. I don't know what else I'm going to do. I was so I, I remember there was a celebrity that had committed suicide and uh, it was so sad. And I remember a lot of people saying, how dare he? How could he do that to his family? And I was in such a dark place in my head. I was able to justify it. I was saying, oh, I could imagine doing that myself because I'm such a miserable person. I'm catatonic. I'm not giving my children or my family what they need. I'm just so hopeless all the time. Sure, if I die, it would be horrible for them for a little bit while. But long term, they wouldn't have to deal with me anymore. It'd be better. It was it was such a dark place. And yes, you're. you're you're absolutely right. You can't really describe it to someone. You have to you have to be there. But uh, I've got a big open heart to anybody that's experiencing that. And I think people out there listening got to realize that, too, because it's so easy for people to say if you have a someone that's depressed in your life, oh, you'll just get over it. Just, you know, go for a walk. It'll get better. It's like you said, Sean, you physically can't even get up off the couch. Sometimes it's it's mm -hmm. so bad. And I would be remiss, man. Honestly, I'm a man of faith, and I, it's it's kind of coupled in together for me. And I I try to keep it obviously focused on the carnivore diet and you know that kind of thing. But for me too, it is coupled with the faith. I can't leave that that aspect out of it. It did build me stronger because you know I'm a Christian, and and that, and you know I don't I don't I don't bring too many things into the mix because I feel like. We can we need to focus on one thing at a time, but I feel like it is kind of all all intertwined together. And I don't think you can really separate it. But if you want to start with something like let's 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 start in one place. But you're a hundred percent, dude. As far as I actually got to have Dr. Barry on on my my little bitty show, you know, and, and thank him face to face. You did an you did an awesome job too, by the way. I watched that whole video, and I I could tell you were probably nervous. I would have been so nervous, and you you knocked it out of the park. I, I encourage everyone watching this. I'll leave a link in the description below, of course, to Sean's channel. But that video in particular was was wonderful. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yes, I'm absolutely. I'm terrified all this. I don't know what it is. I think because I feel I feel the gravity and the importance of the message. You know, it's it's not so much that it's me doing it because you know I've talked with some. So, you know, even Bart K, I talked with him and he's and he brought up the point and I agree completely. It's not so much that it's me, but I don't want to be the hindrance. You know, if that makes any sense, you know, I, I want to get the message out. I want to do my part and I want to get the message out. But I also I get so nervous because I don't want to be like I don't want them to see this guy sitting, you know, in his room in the backwoods of South Carolina and and hear me stuttering over my words or, you know, do something that throws people off of the message, you know, because, you know, Dr. Like you said, even going back to Dr. Barry, he puts himself out there and he obviously he states it a lot more clearly than I do. And from a from a doctor's perspective. However, I like I said, I still have to do my part. But yes, he is amazing. I think, Sean, you're going to get you're going to get over that nervousness because you, you really did. I mean this sincerely. You really killed it. That interview with Dr. Barry. And if you look at it now, I mean, I would be nervous talking to Dr. Barry too. two. He's got two million subscribers. That's you've you've done it. You've achieved it. You've interviewed <laughs> the, the best of the best now. So, yeah, man, you got it. And when you start reading, this is the thing that's been crazy for me. So. I did my 30 day update video and I've, I've done 500 videos on YouTube and mm -hmm. most of them are about homesteading and chickens and stuff like that. And whatever I'm interested in at the time and this carnivore thing just took me by storm. So I'm like, I'll, I just figured I'm going to do one video, but the, the outpouring on that video in the comments, I know you're going to be getting this from that video and your other videos on your channel is, Hey, I never heard of this thing It's exactly what you described earlier. I never I never even knew this was a thing, this carnivore thing as an option. So you're helping so many people by doing that. It's it's just uh, it's amazing. I guess I still kind of view it like, you know, like we used when we were kids, we used to view people, you know, celebrities on TV because I watch all you guys. You know, I watch some of the, you know, the videos when you started homesteading and uh, whenever you like you and your daughter were doing the rice that day and y'all were talking about storing food. <laughs> I, I watched the, 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 the mouse trap. I actually tried that one. So, <laughs> you know, you get the view in these people. And then for me, it's almost like uh, my friends, Cassie and Larry from carnivore quest community. And uh, then ready set keto, James and Emily, I had them on this past Saturday night for a live show. 
And I'm sitting there and I'm like trying to host the show, but I find myself doing this, like watching the video, like <laughs> intrigued in it. And I'm like, oh yeah, you dummy, you gotta you gotta talk, you gotta do stuff. And I get so caught up with those things, man. So I appreciate the 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 support that everybody has shown me. I appreciate the opportunities and everything. But every time I step on camera with somebody, you know, I feel it, it's an honor to me, honestly. It really is. Yeah, I hear you. I have one theory I, on the depression. I think it's such an important thing. And I think there's a lot of people maybe with not as deep depression, but they're getting that way or really bad anxiety. This is my theory on it. Of course, I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving anyone recommendations, but this is what I think for me. And I've never heard this. When I had the horrible depression, they gave me SSRIs, these pills. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're like, you're going to have to take these for three months before we even know if they'll work. And of course, after three months, nothing happened other than I just felt like more of a zombie. And then they're like, mm -hmm. we're going to up them. We're going to do this. Never once, never once did they talk about diet. And mm -mm. it turns out now I'm on carnivore. I have no, not even an inkling of depression. Anxiety has gone as well. I feel like depression is caused from lack of sleep. I don't know if maybe this is common knowledge or something, but for myself, I feel like that's what it was because as soon as I started carnivore, one of the biggest things I noticed in the first day, which is just, it sounds unbelievable. I know Jordan Peterson, he's yeah. been on carnivore for years and he said the first week he stopped snoring. Well, I, I, was, I was a horrible snorer. I used to have a CPAP machine, all that stuff, sleep mm -hmm. apnea. The first day I stopped snoring and my sleep has been amazing. And I've learned over the years, because I've done keto on and off before I found carnivore. Keto seems to help my sleep. And then it's like, oh, wait a minute. And now it seems to help my the dep depression and anxiety. So I don't know. I just thought that was like an interesting theory. I, there's, uh, You mentioned Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. He had this sleep expert on his show, Matthew Walker. And it was very interesting talking about how important sleep is. And a lot of people... Sleep is the single most effective thing that we can do each day to reset the health of our brain and our body. I've talked to people about this and they're like, yeah, I got eight hours of sleep. I'm good. But this guy, Matthew Walker, he was like, the, the number of hours of sleep you get are meaningless. It's how mm -hmm. deep of a sleep you get. If you get in that, that regenerates your body and your cells and everything, you got to get in that deep, deep sleep. I feel like on carnivore, that's like the first time in my life or maybe in 20 years or something, I'm getting that deep sleep. What, what has your experience been like with sleep on carnivore? Well, First, I, I do want to say, like, one of the things that, that I found when I was studying it, going into it, you know, talking, with, you know, watching watching videos and researching, just thinking about the anatomy and physiology and the effects of it, like, it's not just linked to the sleep, but the cholesterol. We're so scared and we're so convinced over time that cholesterol, saturated fats are so bad for us that we try to avoid those things. The problem is that cholesterol is what they're finding is linked to like mental depression, mental disorders and different because that cholesterol is one of the key ingredients to make up every hormone that our body uses. So you're talking about it affects all kinds of things like, for example, you know, just for example, like testosterone. If you know, I'm I'm 40 years old now. I started this at 39. My testosterone as a 39 year old man was 122. And it went up to 150 uh, with uh, replacement. Now it's a low is starts at 220. High is anything over a thousand. So mm. there's no reason for a man my age to have testosterone at 122. What happens if you don't have the testosterone? Horrible sleep, no energy, fatigue, all these different things. So you know the key component that builds those nutrients that gives the nutrients that that builds the cholesterol and maintains homeostasis in our body. We're not giving it oftentimes, so it's a combination not just of the of the sleep and the cholesterol and the right nutrition. So it, it kind of all works together because. Like in, in getting to my experience, I also was on a, I had never been diagnosed with sleep apnea, but I would stop breathing in my sleep so bad that mm -hmm. it, my wife would wake up to check on me to see if I was still breathing. And oftentimes I would snore. It was absolutely horrible. And one day my brother calls me. My brother's uh, just retired a couple of years ago. He was a special forces uh, medic and retired from uh, as a Green Beret or whatever. And like he had been diagnosed with sleep apnea, but he was diagnosed wrong, but he didn't realize it till after he got the sleep apnea machine. Mm -hmm. So 
He said, I've been diagnosed wrong. I'm going to let you have this machine because we all knew how I was doing and I wouldn't go to the doctor, you know? And so I started the first time I put that machine on my face and slept through the night, I woke up and, you know, if you've been on a sleep at me machine, it tells you how many times an hour you quit breathing. Mm -hmm. So it was between 12 and 15 times an hour all mm -hmm. night long that I would quit breathing. And like, there's, that's literally, that could have took my life right there alone. I wasn't sleeping and all those things are kind of combined. A couple, Like you said, a couple of months of, of eating this way and starting to drop that weight. My problem now is that I sleep on it because I'm addicted to it. So I got in the habit of having something there. So, right. I mean, I don't, I don't have it because I got zeros on there now. I, like I don't right. stop breathing. However, I still sleep because I made a habit out of it. I have, but I also found out too, I sleep less and I feel more energized now. Yes. It, like I will sleep for where I used to sleep all day, get up, take a nap. Like now it's, you know, five or six hours and I really just can't sleep anymore because I'm so energized. I got to get up and do something, you know? It's so funny. It's kind of like you were saying earlier, you, you don't know what depression is unless you experience it. I feel it's the same thing on the opposite end of the spectrum. You don't know what carnivore feels like unless you experience it. Because a lot of these things are unbelievable. But I'm shaking my head. I, the same way. I've been waking up at like 4 o'clock in the morning, practically jumping out of bed. I have so much energy. I've, had, I've made so much progress these last 30 days. Just it's unfathomable the amount of work I've been able to get done. And it's just like I have this excess energy where – I'm like lifting weights and I'm doing stuff. Just I have so much more energy. It's yeah. counterintuitive to everything that seems uh, normal. It rubs off too. It like I mean, you guys. I, I like I said, I, I went back, you know, and watched some of the other stuff that I hadn't seen on your channel. And you guys are always into something. Like y'all are all. I mean, obviously running a you know running a homestead. Y'all running that what movie theater too? Like y'all, you guys are always into something. So not just does this affect you, but I am. Without you even telling me, I know that it rubs off on your family and affects them in positive ways as well. So not only is it leading you to a more productive quality of life, one thing that touched me about the situation, like you started talking about your daughter and mm -hmm. how, you know, she was a vegan or whatever and started eating like that. That like, how do you how do you describe this to people to where they accurately grab it? You know, like you can't there's no price tag that you can put on those things, man. You know, the impact on your family, not just you, but like on them as well, man. Y'all are doing it. <laughs> yeah. No, I appreciate that. Yeah. With my daughter, Emma. Well, my other older daughter, Lily, she had open heart surgery and she went on carnivore with me for 30 days. And um, some people have heard the story. I'll just make it real quick. But she had this horrible skin condition, HS, and it was mm -hmm. painful. And she went to over five years. She went to all different dermatologists. We spent thousands of dollars driving all over the state. Every one of those doctors, pill, pill, pill. We can give her um, a cream, an injection, and nothing worked. And she was coming to us just crying, like, this is so painful. Do something, Dad. And I felt so helpless. Like, I, what else can I do? And then that, when I started Carnivore, that was the other reason I wanted to start it. I was like, this thing is crazy. But then I saw Michaela Peterson. I was breastfeeding, getting out of bed. My wrist buckled. I thought, I have to do something because I'm worried I'm going to drop my baby. The arthritis was back. I was itchy everywhere. And I was like, how is this possible? If I'd experienced remission, why isn't that diet working anymore? And I cut everything out except for beef. And two weeks after doing that, thinking, I'm nuts. Hopefully, I don't get vitamin deficiencies. The itch went away and my joints started to feel better. Four weeks after that, I stopped crying in the morning. And five months after that, the anxiety lifted and I was back in what I felt was heaven compared to how I'd been living. All beef, all lamb, salt, and water. My mom went on the diet and her osteoarthritis went away. My dad went on the diet and he lost 70 pounds, kid psoriasis, that went away. I've talked to thousands of people with autoimmune disorders who've done similar things and seen similar results. I've been talking about this diet to spread awareness in hopes that the medical community can take something like this seriously. She's been a carnivore for I think five years and she had similar, she had arthritis and skin issues and she was a young lady like my daughter and she had these amazing results. I'm like, hey, I'm going to try this thing on myself. I'll be the guinea pig. Let's see what it does. And yeah, within the first week, I started seeing those results. So I told Lily, my 18-year-old, I was like, listen, I'm not telling you to just eat meat for 30 days, but I think you should try this as an elimination diet. Something you're eating is causing that painful skin irritation. So she went on carnivore with me for 30 days. And after it was about eight days or so, almost half of her back was cleared up. After five years of pain wow. and suffering and pills and dermatology, not one of those dermatologists said, 
hey, maybe it's just your diet. And I was, I'm telling people now in retrospect, I feel so foolish. It's like, duh, it's a common sense. It's like someone that's eating peanuts that's allergic to peanuts. They're going to get an allergic reaction. She had a reaction to something she was eating. And I had tons of reactions to multiple things I was eating, whether it's vegetables or milk or whatever. I don't know, but it would mess me up. That, that's one of the things that's really annoying. Uh, everything's been really positive with carnivore, mm -hmm. except for the vegan and vegetarian comments I've been getting from people that are like, oh, if you would just eat more vegetables, you, you'd <laughs> do the same thing and you'd feel as good. Yeah, I laugh. I'm like, first of all, I've done that. It almost killed me. And I'm not even exaggerating with the depression and the arthritis I had. Last year, I had arthritis in my toes so bad I couldn't walk and they wanted to do surgery on it. And that's mm. um, it's 95 percent better. Everything else is 100 percent better on carnivore. That's 95 percent. better. I just have a little tinge of pain in there still. It's life changing. I didn't do anything last year. I was just sitting around because it hurt so bad to walk on this foot. I'm still waiting on the vegan video that, that veganism reverses type two diabetes. I'm, yes. I'm, wait, I'm waiting on the. Like the vegan video that shows how it cures non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or the video that it cures depression and anxiety where, right. it, where be, the, I mean, if somebody can link it, link it and tag me in it, I'll be more than happy to check it out. Amen. And, but until that happens, you know, what, what do you want me to do? I'm not telling you that everybody is going to have healing in the next two days after they eat this way. I'm not even telling anybody that they can lose 243 pounds in a year the same way that I did. I'm just here to tell you the message of what I found. And I'm telling you that it's a possibility. And if it worked for me and if it worked for Carrie, it can work for you guys. If you just give it a try, you know, you know, and I kind of just that, you know, that's it. It is what it is. You know, I'm not trying to force anything on anybody. Like you said, I'm with you. You know, I'm just trying to get the message out there because if you've tried everything else, why not try that? You know, is right. one more option in the tool belt yep. because you're not going to hear it from your doctors. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's almost to a point and, you know, I brought this issue up with Dr. Barry. It's in almost, and I try to focus on the positive, but like it's infuriating to me that you had these experts in these fields and there's no, there's no way that they don't know about some of this stuff or they mm -hmm. just, if, if they don't know about it, they should know about it. They, they're not putting that message out there. And even uh, I talked with Dr. Chapey as well, and he brought up the whole thing about cancer. And I made a video about that, you know, a brief kind of mm -hmm. personal uh, thing about that. And he's like, this information is not new. That cancer feeds off of sugar. Now, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong when I say I'm not saying, if, you know, cancer is going to be healed if you just eat all meat. I'm not don't take don't take that as my word. What I'm saying is. Dr. Chafee is quoted a bunch of doctors and a bunch of studies that is uh, almost a hundred years old where it talks about cancer feeding off sugar. Why is nobody putting it together to get that message out as well? Because there's a lot of people like your daughter, you know, going to doctors in pain, whatever. And if this is an option, why is it not emphasize it i guess if that makes sense i don't want to go off on a tangent but i am on the same page 100 percent. couldn't agree more it's it's insane it's absolutely insane and if you look at it i said this in my 30-day update video but if you look at sugar consumption processed food consumption over the last several decades it's just going like this and you look at cancer rates heart disease stroke diabetes I mean, that's all you hear on the news is how our healthcare system's broken. Why is everything so expensive? It's going up the same way as everyone's consuming all of this stuff. And yeah, if you look at, like I said, I'm, I'm going to do a video. I'm going to bring all my pills out because it's just, it's, it makes me so mad when I really think about it. I'm, I'm on the same page as you totally. All of the major things that people have health issues for that they go to the doctor, almost all of them are diet related. They were for me, heart disease. Um, I had a mini stroke years ago. That's diet related. Oh, yeah. Diabetes, my arthritis. It's like over and over and over again. And you go to a doctor for any one of those major things, nothing. None of them talk about nutrition. The only option they have in their toolbox is a pill. I, I used this analogy before. It's like you're taking a big hammer and you're hitting your thumb every mm -hmm. single day and your thumb's bleeding. And you do that for months, years, decades, over and over again. Then you go to the doctor, you're like, my thumb hurts. I keep doing this. And the doctor's like, oh, let me just put a Band-Aid around it. No, just stop hitting yourself with the hammer over and over again. That's it's right. It's just, it's insane. It's absolutely oh, insane. 
Well, I mean, that's what that's what keeps, you know, the business. If, if they actually if they actually were concerned completely with healing people, it would be an option. I mean, that, that, that that's they're funded and, and, and not all of them. Obviously, you have your Dr. Berry's your your uh, Dr. Chafee's you have. And there's so many more. I could go on and on with the doctors that there are. It should be standard standard practice to get the truth out. You know, if if mm-hmm. this is that effective, go look on uh, the uh, diabetes websites wherever you can find them and find where they suggest eating no carb, no sugar diet to help reverse the issues of diabetes. You're not going to find it, and you're not going to find it because if they actually cured it, they wouldn't be finding uh, they, they they wouldn't they wouldn't have a business anymore. If you're really concerned with healing, the, you know, curing the problem, then that's what you're going to tell people because eating eating fruits and vegetables is 100% not going to help your blood sugar stay low. Mm-hmm. It's just not. There's fructose. There's there's three different types of sugars in most fruits. All carbohydrates break down in our bodies. A carbohydrate is nothing but a complex molecule of sugar whenever our body breaks it down. It's just not going to lower your blood sugar, period. If you're a diabetic and you have type 2 diabetes and even type 2, type 1 diabetes, diabetics are seeing so much uh, results. And I've talked with a few of them that have been able to like greatly reduce the amount of insulin that they have to take. And some of them could go from the, the long acting and uh, come off of what is it? The, the short acting and reduce the long acting. Give people the truth and let them let them be healed with this stuff. You know, as much as their body can, you know, but they have they should be able to to decide. Yeah, I'm kind of speechless. I'm so impressed by what you've done because so you've lost over 230 pounds. But all the other things. Sorry. 243 pounds since April the 17th. Yeah. 43. Wow. I started at 457. And I last time I weighed was at the end of the challenge for Carnivore Quest Community. We did like a weight loss challenge in our carnivore group. And it's, I think there's like a little over 4k in there, 4,500. And we lost over 5,000 pounds as a group. Wow. And we've done it. We've done it three times. Actually. The first time we lost a little over 3,000 pounds. The second time as a group, I can't remember. I think it was like 4,900 pounds. We lost, we didn't quite get to the 5,000 goal, but the third time was a charm. And we crushed the 5,000 goal that we had set as a group. I weighed myself and I was, uh, 200, 214 pounds. So I would, something that you said earlier, I bet I, I was going to respond to as well. Yeah. Like uh, you were, you know, about being sarcastic whenever you can, you were, you were first found this way of eating and you were just kind of like skeptical. Right. I was so, my goal, everybody always asks, what is your goal weight? What are you trying to get to? And I'm not there yet, but I'm close. It was 190 pounds. Because, I was at 457 and I was so like, I was like looking at this and I'm like, all right, fine. Then if this is so great, I want to weigh 190 pounds then. And I was being sarcastic and just ridiculous about it. But here I am a little over a year later and I'm like, Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm like within 20 pounds of hitting my, that 190. And it's almost like, it's almost like that, you know, Someone with a lot more power than me just said, "All right, you want you want to play that game? Here yeah. you go." Boy, now what are you gonna do? Careful what you ask for. <laughs> you gotta be careful, my friend, because you might you know you might just actually get that blessing and, and not realize it until you're like, "Wow, not right. only did, did it was you know did this did this happen, but I'm actually gonna hit that 190." Goodness, so, it's gonna be amazing the day you hit that. Probably not far away either. Man, right. you're, you're such an inspiration, though. Obviously, he's 243 pounds. But the fact, this is the thing, this is the thing that gets me. I get emotional. I have all the weight loss and everything, but the life changes is um, we're just, we're living in a world where everyone is addicted to sugar and carbs and processed food. Now, mm-hmm. imagine, and so I, I've heard people say, what's wrong with me? I'm like, there's nothing wrong with you. You were born in a world with a bunch of people addicted to sugar and carbs and processed food. And my parents did it. I did it with my kids. They, they give you this food and you're addicted from a young age. And now you had to overcome that, Sean, in a world where everywhere you go, everyone's eating sugar. You go to the gas station, 
you know, grandma gives sugar to the little kid as a reward, trick or treating. It's like they say sugar is more addictive than cocaine. And you look on an MRI, it lights up just like you're, you're taking a hard drug. And so it's everywhere. So the fact that you were able to overcome that is just so inspirational. But beyond that, from just my experience with the deep depression, not everyone's experienced it, but you were able to pull yourself out of the depression and do that. It's a, it's amazing, man. It's, I'm getting, I'm tearing up a little bit just thinking about it. You're, you're just an inspiration. You're oh. gonna, you're gonna be able to help so many people with your story. Uh, the fact that you lost that that quickly too is also, also really impressive. I, it, what do you, th- what do you think about that? Because I'm trying to be careful with people because I'm, people were like, you're the Billy Mays, the carnivore diet. Like I'm hyping it up and I'm telling people, I'm, t- I'm honestly, I'm telling 100% the truth. Yeah. Um, I am excited and enthusiastic about it. And I do feel like maybe my particular genetics or body type, maybe I benefited more than some other people will. I still think it's the proper human diet and everyone will greatly benefit from it. But maybe there's a little bit of a scale and yourself and myself, maybe we benefit for it more or quicker. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I'll be 100 percent. I agree, too. I think it is the proper human diet. That's how I explain it to people whenever I talk to them about it, because there's a lot of people that I've talked to over the last year that have seen what's happened. I'm talking about one on one in person talking uh, like, you know, like we are. <laughs> so uh, but they often ask, you know, well, what about this or what about that? I say, well, when you get ready to go out and go to work and you jump in your car and you you're headed to work and you see your gas light come on. Do you ever stop to think to pull over and put water in it? Are you going to put kerosene in a race car and think you're going to drive, keep up with the, you know, with the race? I mean, honestly, you don't think about that because, you know, if you want your car to be powered with the correct fuel that it takes to get to work and to get back home, you're going to put gasoline in it. Well, the, we our our bodies are designed with building blocks. And while it, can run off of sugar is not optimal and there's a lot of stuff that w- the the processed foods and fake foods and stuff that we were never intended to fuel our bodies with that we're ingesting this made in a factory somewhere that is just not intended for our bodies and then you move to the spectrum you know that there's some things like i can put regular unleaded fuel 89 or whatever in a nascar Is that guy going to be able to run off 89 and keep up with everybody else on the track? No, because he also, while it does run the car probably, is not going to keep up because the racing fuel is such a higher octane that that car can perform optimally. So, yes, our bodies can consume some sugars and carbohydrates. However, they run optimally off of fats and proteins and burning those ketones. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely different levels to it. And, you know, I, I don't want to say everybody's different. And I understand that. And, and in relation to what your body can tolerate, maybe you can tolerate more carbs than someone else or a little bit of, you know, fresh vegetables. Obviously, it was there and we can consume it and survive for a reason. And, you know, but all the time. I don't really think it is designed for people all the time. I believe our bodies are meant to run off a certain thing. And the closer we get to that, the more optimal it's going to be. And I feel like society is just proving that more and more every day with all the, all that we're seeing happening, you know, with eating the proper human diet. Speaking of the proper human diet, one of the biggest questions I keep getting on my channel is, um, what do you eat in a day? And it's my answer is kind of boring because it's like steak a ribeye sometimes i i do i do the dr barry uh beef bacon eggs and butter bbbe um, BB, yeah what what have you been doing the same I, I actually to be quite honest the exact same thing so like i eat for the last nine months until actually last night so i i started when i first started out last year in april i ate three times a day just meat period meat, water. I drank some of these sparkling waters or whatever, uh, or regular water. But when I first started out, I was eating three times a day, any meat that would, you know, would, would suffice. And then eventually I started, uh, because of a challenge in a group, uh, started beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And that was in June of last year. 
And ever since June of last year, I've eaten beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And I have kind of tweaked how I did it as far as, you know, two meals a day. I tried to go to one meal a day, and I just couldn't eat the correct portion to feel as good as I did and and everything. So I didn't stay on one meal a day for, I think, maybe two or three weeks, and I was done with that. I eat two meals a day. I eat about 10 o'clock in the morning and I eat about two o'clock in the evening. Generally, I don't like eating too close to when I get up or too close to when I go to bed. And I will have for the last, like I said, eight, nine months now, every day I have eggs with butter. Like I make deviled eggs. I actually have a video on my channel about that, but um, it, it's eggs and I'll take a half a stick of butter. And instead of using the mayonnaise because of the seed oils, I'll just take a half a stick of butter and hot water and get it to the consistency and make deviled eggs out of it. I'll prepare five bowls of them, put them in the refrigerator. And whenever it comes time for my first meal, I just go grab one of my little trays. And it's usually about what, eight eggs or four, four whole eggs, eight halves and put some salt on it. And that's what I have for that meal. And it's been great. And then my second meal has been ribeye steak. I'll go to my butcher shop and I'll buy the whole rib roast and have them just chop it up. I'll have, you know, 15, 18 steaks and I'll grill four or five at a time on the grill. You know, I reverse sear them and uh, put them in the refrigerator and second meal of the day. If I want one or I want one and a half, whatever it is, that's what I have. Last night I had a, a chuck roast my wife cooked with, you know, she started eating this way up right at a month ago after all, after seeing all this. Awesome. And, and so she made a chuck roast last night. And I was like, oh, that's something I could have. I'm going to have some of that. <laughs> isn't it, isn't it awesome when your family's starting to come on board? That's one thing I've really enjoyed because they, they've cooked for me too. Like I'm just cooking for myself this whole time, but now my daughter's in it too. She's like, I'll make you something. I'm like, well, really? Oh, awesome. But my <laughs> yeah. wife will, my wife is still a vegetarian. So oh, yeah. I, yeah, I, I've got a long way to go with her, but my my vegan uh, daughter switched over, so maybe she will too. But yeah, our it's so nice talking to you because it's very similar. So I, that's usually what I eat too. I'll have a bunch of I've been alternating lately. I'll have bacon and eggs for breakfast, but I'm gonna try your deviled egg thing because that sounds really good. And then I'll usually have maybe like a smaller steak in the afternoon, and then the next day I'll have a ribeye. And then I, I just rotate. So it's usually two, one, two, one. But sometimes if I'm, I just do what Dr. Barry says, eat until I'm comfortably full. And I just, one of the things I found on carnivore is I'm listening to my body so much more. And it seems like when I eat like a big fatty ribeye or the eggs, my body's like screaming at me. Thank you. Yes. After 42 years, you finally figured it out. I get energized. It's almost like back in the day when I'd have caffeine, it was like a rush or something, but it doesn't wear off like the caffeine. It just, it lasts and I got that energy. Dr. Barry brought the issue up with the ghrelin and the leptin, um, our, our satiety hormones, man. Once you start eating like this for a little while and your hormones start getting that cholesterol and getting the, the proper nutrition, you know, you start being able to listen to your body. And that's another thing that that's probably one of the hardest things for me to try to tell people who are just coming into this way of eating is your body literally will let you know when you're really hungry. You know, if you're, you know, if you're really hungry, anything will work. If you're, if you, if you look at a, a, that steak, for example, that we have and you say, oh, man, I'm hungry, but I don't think that'll work. You're bored. You're not hungry because if you were mm -hmm. truly hungry, anything would work. But yeah, absolutely, man. Getting the family on board. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I actually, my, my wife eats this way. My daughter's been dabbling with it. She's 12 and she's been dabbling with it. Uh, my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law are both eating this way. My mom is eating this way. My mom actually sent me her lab values this morning in an email and called me and we're sitting here discussing her lab values. And honestly, yeah, I'm not going to share her lab values. I didn't ask her if I could, but um, everything was good. I'll just tell you that everything that was important is like for, you know, amazing. And I'm like, my goodness, you know, and I've shared before. So I will share that my mom has suffered from Hashimoto Hashimoto's. And so one of the things that I've been trying to work out, I've been, I've been sending messages back and forth. I'm trying to get Nisha on the Nisha. I was just going to say, yep. 
and I actually have something planned. If, if our schedules can work out, I want to get her on the show because, you know, she's been doing key divorce. She's suffering from Hashimoto's and she's been doing work and reversed it. So, you know, for no, and I guess you could say for selfish reasons for my mom, but like not just for my mom, I feel like that'll help people because there's a lot of people that have those thyroid issues that it can be changed. So getting exactly. the family on board and helping everybody, that's man, it's, it's almost like it's become like a, intriguing obsession you know yeah it's funny my sister has hashimoto's and she loves nisha and um mm -hmm. i've been watching their her channel as well too she's got such great content and uh yeah, my mom too started uh carnivore maybe she, she's probably been on it like 40 days uh so very similar story my, my mother's on it too and wow, my stepdad's starting it as well he's lost a bunch of weight and but for my mom too, it wasn't really the weight. It was uh, arthritis, uh, fluid mm -hmm. in her in her knees were killing her. All mm -hmm. completely gone. It's uh, and I, I I'm not even I'm not like, hey mom, you should do this. I'm just yeah. I put the video out there. Here's my results, and then you guys can make the own decision, your own decision for yourself if you want to. Did you have you said you were talking about your arthritis? Did you have gout? Cause so I uh, 18 months ago. I had this horrible pain in my foot and my dad has gout. And so I'm like, this is gout. And I didn't, um, I didn't have a good insurance or doctor at the time. And I, I found a doctor online. He's like, yeah, you definitely have gout based on your symptoms. He gave me the alpurinol and uh, what's the other one? Cold, cold, cold. Yeah. <clears throat> we tried that for months and it did nothing. And then I went to a real doctor. I went in and he was like, well, we just got to up the dose on the alpurinol. And I was like, you know, doctor, I, my dad has gout. Maybe that's it. But it was my middle toe, not my big toe. It was mm -hmm. really weird. It was this kind of unusual thing. And it didn't feel like gout. It didn't really get inflamed like gout would. You couldn't mm -hmm. even really. It, it felt like a fractured bone. And mm -hmm. so I went to this other doctor. He upped the dosage. And then long story short, I went to three doctors. The third one was a, a foot specialist. That's all he does. He was like, dude, you don't have gout. You've just been taking alpurinol and all this other stuff. They put injections in it, too. That was the only relief I had in a year and a half. But he's like, you definitely don't have gout. He's like, your toe is just full of arthritic fluid. And there's so much pressure in there. And he's like, we can – he described the surgery. That would have been horrible. I was ready to do the surgery. And this all happened right around the time I saw uh, Frigno Freedom's video and then went down the Dr. Barry route and started carnivore. So it wasn't gout, long story short. But it was treated as gout for quite a while. I just had someone leave a comment on my channel that said they've suffered from horrible gout for decades and they watched Dr. Barry's video on gout and they're like, I'm just, I've tried everything. I'm going to try it. And, um, well, this was a couple, couple months ago and they'd lost, they said, uh, afterwards gout's completely gone, no gout. And they lost 50 pounds. And I keep getting comments like that. It's just, it's so inspiring. I, mm -hmm. I'm on the same page as you. Like, so I, I mentioned earlier, I did my 30 day carnivore update and I was like, I'm probably just going to do one video on this, but I've gotten so many comments from people saying, I wish I had this information before. So mm -hmm. I, I want to help more people. And, uh, that's my, that's kind of my goal going forward. And I think we could do it by getting your message out and talking with other folks and doing more YouTube videos. Um, mm -hmm. But one other thing, and this is kind of a big goal, and I, I probably wouldn't have had a goal like this if I wasn't on carnivore, but I just, I'm more motivated now. Uh, my daughter and I were talking about this. I'm really interested in, uh, so I, I've got a lot of video background. I've mm -hmm. done 500 YouTube videos. And then besides that, we do videos for Amazon products. So I've done a lot of video work. I, I worked with a customer once and we got an animation put together that ended up on Netflix. And so uh, long story short, I was like, we need uh a documentary about carnivore. Like oh, wow. and our, my daughter, Emma, the, the vegan turned carnivore, she just hit day 14. She, uh, one thing with her that's really interesting. And, um, where I'm actually doing a video today on the video is about Emma switching from vegan to carnivore mm -hmm. and her big thing. Like I give her credit cause I disagree with the vegan thing. And she was so malnourished after five years and she had so many health issues. Um, but the reason she did it, her heart was in the right place. She's compassion for animals and she didn't yeah. like seeing. It. So I, I, I give her credit for that. And my argument to a lot of the vegans lately that have been leaving negative comments is I was thinking about this more and I was thinking about Emma because Emma's on day 14. And one of her things that she's doing differently than I am on carnivore is she won't eat any meat or eggs unless she knows where it came from and that it was humanely raised. 
And we're fortunate to be able to do that. I know some people can't afford to do that. It can be more expensive. We have our own chickens. So we have our own eggs. Our chickens have a great life. But she doesn't want to go to Walmart and buy an egg. And I'm not judging anyone. If that's all you can do, I'm not judging anyone. But she doesn't want to go to Walmart and buy an egg if the if the chicken was just in a cage its whole life and it was treated horribly. So I'm like, that that's cool. I'm like, you're I said this to her in the video just randomly, like you're kind of the compassionate carnivore. And then a bunch of people that are like, you should turn that into like a shirt or a bumper sticker or something, mm -hmm. compassionate carnivore. So uh Emma and I made a shirt. I just put it on my YouTube channel. But my thing is, I'm not I don't want a penny of the money from it. So this is what Emma and I decided. We're going to put the shirt on the YouTube channel and offer it up to people. And every penny we get, we're going to put it into a fund to try to make this uh, carnivore documentary movie. Yes. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But I'm excited about it. It's going to be a big project. I want to do it properly. And it's going to be expensive to film it all and like pull in someone because I have done lots of video, but I'm not a documentary filmmaker. So I'm going to need someone with some expertise to, to help with it. But I'm actually... Uh, Dr. Barry, he commented on two of my videos. Mm -hmm. It was awesome because like you, I'm like, this guy's like, I'd rather get a comment from him than like a movie star or something like this guy's amazing. A lot, and yeah. so we talked a little bit. And he said, why don't I come on your channel and do a QA? and a I'm like, I was so happy. I was like jumping up and down. Mm -hmm. So we have to schedule it. But <clears throat> I was going to mention this to him and uh, Dr. Dr. Chafee, too. I'm going to be on his uh, YouTube channel next month. So I was going to mention it to him. But in my head, I'm just picturing, wouldn't it be amazing to have just a true and honest documentary on carnivore yes. and then have some real folks in it, people like yourself, but maybe maybe we have real folks in it that are just starting carnivore because a lot of people want to document their journey so they're accountable for it. So imagine if you had a camera, Sean, when you first started at 457 pounds and you had it for the whole year and we could show all of that in one documentary, but then mix in mm -hmm. Dr. Barry's testimony and Dr. Chaffee and some of these other people. I think it I think it could really help reach a lot more people than maybe we could just on YouTube, especially if we could. There's no guarantees, but if we could get it on like Netflix or Amazon Prime or something like that. Your heart's kind of going, number one, I, I, before I forget about it, like I just had to mention your daughter, man, that she's got a huge heart, dude. Like what you just said, you know, the reason why she did was a vegan and and then, you know, coming together with you on making this documentary with, with the funds from, you know, the ideas and everything like that's a big heart, man. And, and, and that just, that tells me a lot about you. And I appreciate that because like, that just tells me she got that heart from somewhere, you know, and she's seen it, it lived out in front of her. So I appreciate that. You know, and I want to bring mention of that, but yes, as far as the documentary, man, like that's kind of my heart too. You know, I, I have no idea what I'm doing with YouTube. I like literally just, watch videos like everybody else and then here i am making videos like i'm bringing this saturday night i'm bringing on the carnivore couple i think they've been doing it a little right at two months um, maybe three at most you know or a month i mean it hasn't been it hasn't been long and so basically i'm gonna i'm bringing them on and not because they have you know five years or a year of experience or whatever but they're they're starting out on this journey they're a young couple and I want to encourage people like that because people need somebody to believe in them, man. And like, mm -hmm. it, this is possible. And, you know, being able not just to document the journey and show how they're living, uh, but step in there and say something, do something, just show them, hey, look, man, you got people that support you. Yes, you're going to see those negative comments. Yes, you're going to see those people who are against you. Try to put the blinders on and just keep doing what you're doing and be encouraged. And I support that. Like there's, you know, that's that's the mission, man. Getting that message out and 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 being able to document that in a documentary or something and getting it on that would be huge, man. Because look how big the message of Carnivore is and what it's doing for people's real everyday life and affecting them, and how much you know publicity it's got. I mean, come on, man. It's that would be huge and i would love to work with something like that oh it'd be it'd be great to have you and your story in it too for sure yeah so it's a lofty goal but it's something definitely i want to i want to work towards so uh, i just i just want to make sure to do it right it's kind of like you were saying you're nervous that you want to you know you go on with dr barry you want to do it right that would be the same thing with this is i want to do it right because you kind of got like one shot at this thing so i want to bring in some people that really know what they're doing and put it together properly but if we could get like dr barry or dr chaffee on board too to kind of go through it and, and put their mm -hmm. sort of seal on it too i think that would help as well 
I mean, we just stay in touch and, you know, I, you know, I'll help you whatever I can do, you know, all, off camera, you know, on camera, off camera, whatever. We can just throw ideas and, you know, whatever you want to do, man. Like, I'm good. Like I said, I'll help you any way I can with that. I appreciate it. And and likewise, this has been a great conversation. Anything I can do to help you out, too? You ever um, – we got to stay in touch. You, you're like – I, I, it's so crazy the the similarities in the stories, but it's really touching to me with your depression and stuff like that because I I feel you and the fact that you came out of that the darkest place amongst the sugar addiction and breaking through all of that in the world we're living in it's it's amazing so yeah anything I can do to help you out with your YouTube channel or uh, yeah. we gotta we're gonna have I have a feeling this is gonna be a very popular video we're gonna have to have some follow up discussions maybe on your channel or my channel or whatever you want to do I'm 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 up for it. I'll invite you over to my channel. We'll get you in on there for a live and people can come ask, you know, ask live, live Q and a, if yeah, you know, I'm really happy to do that, man. Yeah. I love anytime. I, I will, I, I will drink. drop every, I will drop everything else to do it. I would love to it'd be, it'd be an honor to do that. So um, I love surrounding my people, myself with good people, man. And like, to me, you know, you're impacting lives. You're, you know, who you let, who you let around you is critical about who you're becoming. And if you surround yourself with good people that, you know, that it brings you up. If you if you let all those people stay around you that are always negative and always down, I'm not saying don't help them. But if you if you just surround yourself with that environment, it's going to bring you down. So, like, I'll be more than happy to have you on, man, because you got You got a good heart. Obviously, I just mentioned a, a reason why, you know, it's evident in your family, what you're doing, your mission here on, on YouTube. And, you know, I mean that's the type of people I need around me too. That's, that's reason number 4,000 carnivores Austin too. what you just said there, <laughs> surrounding yourself with positive people. I've talked to so many carnivores over the last uh, 65 days and mm -hmm. I, maybe I'm biased or what, but every single one of them, yourself included, they're awesome. They're great. They're happy. They're, they're motivated. They're energized. There's like this weird carnivore Zen. It's like everyone that's <laughs> carnivore has it. And the only negativity I've gotten is again, the, the vegan stuff, but their heart's in the right place. So I, I forgive them for that. But uh, everyone else, it's, it's been so nice. I wish I knew some more people locally because it's, it's weird kind of being off by yourself. But now I got my family doing it a little bit. I, I guess I have some local carnivores to talk to now. But well, this has been awesome. Wow, we went over an hour. It just went by in a flash. I, I wrote down a bunch of questions and I didn't even get to them. But I think this was a this is one of the better conversations I've had about carnivore. And you're, you're an inspiration, Sean. I really appreciate it. So your intentionalcarnivore.com is your website. And then on YouTube, it's also intentional carnivore, right? Mm, my you, YouTube is intentional. Yeah. Intentional carnivore and intentionalcarnivore.com is the, the site that I'm trying to get up. Like it's not complete. It is, it is live. You can go there, look okay. at it. Got some stuff up there. I got some Dr. Barry posts for resources, you know, Bart K and some of those guys. Uh, Dr. Chafee. Uh, but I'm trying to put it together. I have, that's one more thing that like I started, like I have no idea what I'm doing, d designing a website, but I'm, I'm working on it or Facebook is intentional carnivore, Sean White. So that's the three places I'll be. Awesome. Yeah. And I strongly, strongly encourage everyone go right now, check it out. He's got some great stuff there. What an inspirational story. So go over there, subscribe and give him some love. And you've been doing a lot of great content lately. I got to start doing some more of the live streams. I know you've done quite a few of those. So really good, good information. Uh, a lot of people commenting on my videos, they're just starting out and they have questions and they want to be inspired and they want to see that it works. And you're, you're proof, you're practicing what you preach. So really everyone go check out Intentional Carnivore, some great stuff there. Thank so, you. We'll get off camera and I'll invite you over to the live. We'll set up a time at some point and we'll make that happen. And there you go. You can do yours and come be on mine too. <laughs> awesome. Yep. All right. So we'll end it there. Thank you so much, Sean. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, man. I appreciate you having me. Thanks again.